six days of the Human Design Rave Festival 2024. Hello. Hi to all of you out there, huh? Yeah, it's nice to be here with you. I'll tell you a little story <laughs> just about how I met human design. It's 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 one of these things, you know, where we meet who we're supposed to meet. We things happen and unfold the way they're meant to happen, whether we live this or not. I mean, you know, our whole life wasn't a mistake. It all brought us to this very moment. Um, I was uh, uh, living in Switzerland and I had a friend um, from the past who lived there as well. And my husband and I had another friend who was living in Switzerland. And we thought it would be uh, that these two people would like each other. So we had them over to our home for uh, brunch one, one, uh, one day. And they got together and they ended up living together. And then they ended up moving to the United States. And it turned out that it was um, around the time that Ra knew he was told by the voice that he needed to bring human design to the United States within seven years. And it was, um, you know, getting close to that time. So someone suggested he contacted uh, the man who was part of this couple. And uh, so he did, and they ended up running human design for him in the United States for a number of years. Anyway, this friend emails me, not, I'm sorry, not emails. She actually writes me a letter because there was no email back then <laughs> and asked for my birth information and the birth information from, uh, for my husband. So I, I sent it to her and uh, she mails me back in an envelope, two charts and a little booklet. And uh, these charts were kind of intriguing. And my mind was like, well, why is that colored in mine and not colored in his? And you know what the mind does when it looks at charts for the first time, it has all these questions. And so um, I looked at this book. <laughs> now, I, I was a sannyasin, you know, we meditated, we celebrated, we had a good time, you know, it was not very mental at all. And I opened this booklet, there's this man on the front cover, and he's got this hat on. And I opened this booklet, and it's talking about leptons and protons and the neutrino field and all of this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is she into? This is so mental, you know? So I kind of put it away and put it in my drawer. And that was, I think 1992 or something like that. Didn't think much of it. And then uh, we ended up that we were living in uh, Florida at that time, because we also had moved from Switzerland. And then we moved to Sedona. And uh, this woman said she would need, was coming to Sedona and, could she stay with us because she was going to do an introductory lecture? So she did. She stayed with us and she brought the books. And I started looking at these books and I'm like, wow, this is really fascinating. And she gave me a reading about my channels and gates. And in those days, you were either to do or you were to wait. That was it. Then, uh, so I was very much into... Uh, looking into these books and, and, you know, wondering who this man was that this information came to, but I didn't really want to learn it. This was 1994. So she came a few other times and I was always fascinated by human design and by these channels and gates and centers and, you know, what, what uh, I could see in my own chart and the chart of my loved ones. And then it was in 1997, Ra uh, came to Sedona. He was in Taos many times, but I never responded to going to a course or 
my friends did because I had turned, I had told so many people about human design back then. So they were doing all these courses, but for me, it was, nah, I, I didn't really want to do it. So anyway, um, she came to Sedona with Ra. He stayed somewhere else. She stayed with me, but part of taking care of not taking care of Ra, you don't take care of Ra, but part of the whole thing was you had to feed him. You know, he was staying somewhere else and neither one had a car and I did. So I remember the first day going to where it was and picking him up and us going out to eat and having the greatest time talking. And I mean, I, I, I was like, this guy is really different. He's so unique, you know? And uh, I just loved talking with him and we laughed a lot and we just had a really fun time together. And then he had uh, a few days later, we did this for a few days because he had to eat and then he had an introductory evening. And um, I went to this evening and he talked about readings and he talked a little bit about type just very little and he had never brought type to the United States this was the first time there was type and um anyway I wanted a reading with him so I had my reading with him and um I mean throughout the reading he was telling me I was a generator I needed to wait to respond. Now I know in the human design charts now, it just says to respond. But in those days, it was wait to respond. Yes, I know generators are always saying we're responding all the time, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we do. We're responding to life all the time. We have the life force within us. But wait to respond is something else. It's something magical truly magical because you're no longer initiating you know i was a good pretend manifester oh boy i was i you know i'm from new york you know we just go 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 and do this do that get ahead succeed la 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 la, la. if you don't do it who's going to do it all of that stuff so everything single aspect on my chart my love of humanity, my caring, my this, my that, everything he related to, but only in response. People have to come to you. They have to ask for your help. They have to ask you. And then you have sounds that will come out. You, I can't trust any words that come out of your mouth. That's what he said to me. And I was like, <gasps> you know, because I, I really valued I thought I was speaking my truth my whole life. It was very important for me to, to speak my truth. <laughs> Little did I know that, that I can never speak my truth. I can only sound my truth. Huh? Anyway, to make a long story short, this had a great impact on me, this reading. And, you know, I left that reading and I was like, whoa. And I remember just kind of pulling everything back in a way, energetically, huh? And it was like, okay, I need to wait. I just need to wait. Well, I don't want to go into all of that because many of you read my book. I know it was translated into a few different languages. So I'm not going to go into that now. But that waiting was was quite amazing, it was, it was really, really uh, transformative. As a mother, I was like, wow, I really want to have a reading for my daughter. And I wanted to have a reading for my granddaughter as well, who was six years old. And at that time, um, the, a, a new granddaughter was born. She was just a baby. 
but I knew I wanted her birth information because I was aware of human design before. I wasn't aware of type, but I was aware of human design. So I wanted a reading for her too, because I felt what greater gift can I give my daughter than this? And what greater gift for the grandchildren? You know, I have the 2750, which is the channel of, you know, caring, nurturing. It's like, okay, we have these kids. How are we going to support them? Well, for me, you know, the strategies of human design is, is the only way I could see to support them. So I remember um, asking my husband if it was okay to spend the money because back in those days, and we're talking 1997, uh, it was $350 per reading if I could spend all that money. And he said, yes. So I remember giving Ra the money and him doing a reading for my daughter and my two grandchildren. <clears throat> and um, I sent the cassettes, they were cassettes back then, the cassettes in the mail. And my daughter called me and she said, I can't tell you how much this re reading meant to me. You know, she's a pure freak, pure individual, you know, totally open throat. Um, and, and, I think everything relaxed inside of her hearing the truth of who she is rather than trying to be like everyone else or, you know, thinking something's wrong with her. I mean, like we all do, that's what our minds do. Anyway, to make a long story short <laughs> is um, uh, she's been experimenting as long as I have and the grandchildren as well. And, um, uh, I felt that it would be really nice, oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago to have my daughter and my oldest granddaughter and me come together and talk about what it is to live this as, you know, as three generations. So what you're going to see next is, is that workshop we did and the questions people have and the sharing. And, you know, you'll see from my daughter that she doesn't know anything about human design, but she's living it. She's living it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoy the whole um, uh, Ray Fest, huh? Take care. Bye-bye. Get your tickets today. See you soon.